so bruschetta and taylor swift got into a big rift were you surprised at any of that no man like as soon as you look that's the beauty of scott bruschetta like he's a badass don't make no mistake every decision that i get to make now about my career is because of scott is he an asshole or does he just know what he's Both. doing like what i've figured out is that there there's nobody in this world at least from my experience there's nobody who gets to who who succeeds at that level at any level really that doesn't piss somebody off because and it's not a matter of stepping on toes and and being inconsiderate it's a matter of knowing exactly what you want that's your agenda i work for a guy like that at the wwe yeah yeah, you did. He knew what he wanted and got it done. So Scott Borchetta is exactly, in my mind, the equivalent, give or take, different character qualities of Vince McMahon. It's like, yeah, man, when somebody has an opinion that's unmovable. Okay, he's kind of like the heel or, you know, the bad guy. Or the hero. Doesn't matter. I guess it depends depending on who you are. Yeah, depending on who he's backing <laughs> at the time. And so, I, you know, it's like one of those things where, he told me one time, he goes, you're the driver. He's a NASCAR guy. He goes, you're the driver. Quit trying to be the pit crew chief, the thing, the thing, the owner. He goes, dude, drive the car. I'll take care of the rest. And I wasn't comfortable in that role after a certain level. I was like, no, man, I want to choose the tires. I want to choose the thing. I want to... And he goes, that ain't how it works. And I go, all right, well, fuck you. And he goes, well, no. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guess what? I win. And you we too. both win. Yeah, I get to be here now doing what I want to do. And I, I don't have to be trying to be somebody that I'm not. He understood that. So what happened there to Big Machine at the end? Scott said, hey, man, we've tried eight singles. Like, I think that's his number. Like, I think he has a formula. If you go eight singles and you're not over a million records yet, it ain't going to happen. Which was actually probably pretty true. Like, that's where my theory of like, hey, man, whatever I was selling, they weren't buying. So then I go, okay, cool. I'll go make a record of eight or 10 songs that I think I would buy. The main takeaway from, from the whole big machine thing is that don't try to sell what you would not buy. Don't try to sell what you would not buy because that will never work. And so when I left that label, I go, okay. I will no longer make records that have any compromise in them, even though sometimes that works, but compromise won't work for me. So I went and made six or eight songs that I was like, if I was in charge of the world, this is what country music would sound like. And I took them to every label. And I had access at that point to all the big labels. And I go, hey man, this, this is what I think we could work with. I don't think this would work. And there was this kind of vibe of like, this is where the, the Scott Borchetta thing is a double-edged sword. If he couldn't make it work, what makes you think we could? Because he's the best. Like even the best of the other best that I thought were badass, they kind of looked at me like, you were with the best, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, like how, what do you think I'm going to do with your sorry ass? You're almost 40 years old. And so I was like, oh. So after that, which is only a couple years, I go, I got to go home. If I'm going to really do what I need to do, it's about, it's about writing songs. 